And yeah, welcome back. It's now time for big issues. Here we discuss the topical issues making the rounds in the news, online and on air in the country. And we always ask you to be a part of the segment by tweeting at us with the hashtag TV3 New Day on X. I'll read your messages as we go. Also, this morning we're giving away some cash on Cash Out. If you dial star 439 hash as a Vodafone or Telecel, an MTN subscriber, you get to win at least... 1,000 Ghana cities, at the very least, 1,000 Ghana cities on the show. So take your phone now and dial star 439 and hash to win at least 1,000 Ghana cities on the show. Yesterday, we gave away 2,000 Ghana cities. So who knows? Today just might be your lucky day. So dial and win. Now, this morning on Big Issues, we're going to be talking about two topical issues. One, we know that this morning there is a protest which has been announced, a three-day protest um, by a group calling itself Consent Citizens. A three-day protest has been announced, um, taking place starting from Uponglo in front of the University of Ghana. And the call is simple that the protesters, the Democracy Hub protesters who have been detained or they're currently on remand because uh, they were out protesting, um, I think somewhere a week ago, asking for Galamse to stop, asking for a state of emergency to be declared. They have been charged with various acts of unlawlessness um, during the protest, and they are currently on remand in prison custody, nine people, and the remaining of them are in police custody. They are 53 in all. This morning, young people are hitting the streets, asking that these protesters be released, one, and two, a state of emergency be declared, asking for Galamse to stop immediately. And they're asking the government to declare a state of emergency. Uh, let's take a look at this, and then when we come back, I'll share the second topic with you. We've notified the police. We've written to them. We had a meeting with them. Um, they took us through the routes, literally drove us through the entire route so that they are aware where we are going. And um, you notice this evening, they have put out an official statement um, announcing to the general public that there is going to be a demonstration. These are the routes that we'll be using. So it's a way of informing the public that these are the routes we'll be taking. Let people be informed. And they've outlined their um, role as the police and also outlined the role of organizers for the, pro for the protest. So, sorry. Yes. Finished. Yes. The numbers are organized. So we are looking at over 3,000 and we hope for more more people to join, really. The more the, the number, the clearer the message that will be sent to the government. Simply put, what's the main call for this protest? The main call for the protest is for Galamse to stop now. No. For Galamse to stop now. Second, Second for um, our brothers and sisters who have been arrested to be freed. The way they are being treated is unfair, unjust, and that is not the way to go. Their, their crime is for speaking up against Galamse. So we are asking for them to be freed. This that is, is it. All right, so there you have it. That's what the call is for. For Galamse to stop now and also for the demonstrators or protesters to be released. Well, we're going to go onto the phone lines now and talk to one of the organizers. Um, is it Kichafs Atengble? If I'm pronouncing your name wrongly, please correct me. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the show. Morning, Nashoko. Did I, did I pronounce your name correctly? The name is Kichafs Atengble. Kichafs. Ketchups. All right. Thank you so much. Now, um, can you update us on plans for this morning? Yeah. So after yesterday, when we had the press conference, um, everything was in place for this protest to to happen today, and we we are converging at Legon, Legon at the Opongo entrance, and then we yeah convergence begins at six a.m. and then we start moving at nine a.m. The police is aware they uh, to deploy their personnel to secure everything that will be happening. All right. Can you can you tell us the routes, the full route? So from Okonglo, are you going to go all the way down? We know you are ending at the Independence Square, but would you come straight? Because I, I, I recall yeah. you mentioned that you will avoid the 37 intersection. So which way are you going? So this uh, very one, the, there was the, 
an agreement with the police to um, branch off around the Association International to the airport, uh, airport junction traffic light, branch towards Association International, and then head on through the National Service uh, Secretariat through to the Kanda high, uh, Highway, and then all the way to the EC roundabout. And then we branch off towards um, um, Parliament, uh, the conference center, that area. All right. And then to the Independence Square. All right. All yeah. right. Yeah. Now, just to be clear, your group is not Democracy Hub, is it? So I am representing Democracy Hub. Uh, what happened is that uh, other um, organizations, and uh, young people like us who are Ghanaian citizens, obviously, um, decided to um, join the call for the end of Galante. But now, not just one request being made, but that um, our colleagues who have been um, picked up by the police are also uh, let gone off. Okay. Okay, all right. And your reason for going on this protest are twofold, we understand. One is to ask exactly. for the protest to, test to be released. Yes. And the other is to ask for government to declare state of emergency. Definitely. All right. All right. And after this protest, what next is the question that has been asked um, a few times since you announced. After the protest, well, let, what next? Yeah, let me, let me put this very protest in a bit of context. So Democracy has had the first protest um, to be organized from the 21st of September to the 23rd. And uh, much of the discussions with the police, we, we didn't want to comply with the police. It was to be the police, the law makes it clear that police, the police could recommend, you know, routes and things to us. But we insist that because we know how our authorities always want to take things easy and want to take our demands as citizens for a right. And so we wanted to make a, a statement on that. And that ended because we couldn't have an agreement with the police. They chose the pathway of brutality. And then they deployed all these um, um, tactics that we are seeing having some of our colleagues uh, uh, arrested. Um, but that is just one of the ways we could go. This very one, together with other colleagues forming the uh, coalition, uh, we chose to go the soft way and see it's more of a test of the political system, a test to the police, to see if this soft way of agreeing with them will produce the results that we are communicating. If it doesn't produce the results, obviously then we would, we would look at other options as well. And these will, those will be communicated duly in due time. All right. But this protest today is going to be along approved routes by the police, routes that you and the police have agreed to without any problems. Yes. So All there right. is an agreement with the police on this route, All actually. Right. All right. Thank you so much, so Ketchum, for joining us. We anticipate it to be a very peaceful one and that we encourage all um, well-meaning Ghanaians to join this very one and uh, let's let, let drive home the demand and see if the demands that are being made will be, will be responded to since the authorities suggest that um, the earlier protest was, was, was chaotic and so they couldn't, they couldn't uh, work with us. Let's see if they could work with this very one. Thank all right. Very much. And you're starting at what time? Yeah, so convergence starts at 6 and uh, we start moving right. at 9. All right, so you start moving in one and a half hours. We'll, we'll be following and um, we'll be uh, updating our viewers about this protest. So all the best to you. We really appreciate that. And we'll talk to you again. Call. All right, thank you so all much right. for talking to us. Ketchups at Tingle is um, one of the conveners of today's demonstration, which is starting from the Okpunglo intersection in front of the University of Ghana. And they're asking for the Democracy Hub protesters to be released and also for government to declare a state of emergency uh, to stop Galamsi now. You can join us with the hashtag TV3 New Day on X. I'll be reading your messages as we go. In addition to this, we're also going to be talking about the live broadcast of the IPAC meeting last Tuesday. And we're asking, is this a bold step by the EC to restore trust?
in the electoral process. You're welcome to the show. Our ladies are here and seated on Thursdays. We always have our ladies on the show. Nanaya Achimpim Jantwa, the former general secretary of the CPP, is here with us. Good morning. Great to have you. You're looking very hip this morning. <laughs> also joining us on the show today, Louisa Kwache, NDC National Communications Team member. Louisa, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to have you. Also, Rodlin Imoro Iyana, Hi. member of the Alliance for Revolutionary Change, is here. Good morning, Rodlin. Good morning. Always Africa. repping your African print. Exactly. I'm an yes. African true. Yes, true. we should all learn from you. Yes, you should. And Dr. Ikua Amwako, NPP communications team member i think it's the first time i'm meeting you on the show yes, this is. great to have you great yeah to welcome be here. and good morning to all your lovely viewers thank you so much ladies there's a, a protest starting this morning at, at, at 9 a.m uh, uh, louisa are you, are you joining no oh, yes if i have the time i would join them i i from what they said i think yesterday i listened to them on ghana tonight and they said they are using the routes from Oponglo yes. and then probably they will use the Kaokodi intersection. So if I'm living in there around, I'll join them. So today is a black and red Citizens Day. That's why I'm black. I'm wearing my black. Okay. And then it's pink October. So I have a touch of pink. Oh. I am a citizen and not a spectator. <laughs> the colors are evenly distributed. Yes. Now, um, there have been questions about uh, this particular demonstration, some concerns about the demonstration. Among other things, um, I think some of the notable concerns I've seen is that protests have, been, ha have happened, at least the last one we saw, and we did not see any real response from the government regarding the demands of the protesters. Do you think that another protest is a step in the right direction? Um. Thank you to your viewers, and I would want to say a good morning to every Ghanaian watching us this morning. Um, I'm surprised you are asking if governments had given any response or not, or in anticipation of any government response. Right from the onset, it has always been clear the trajectory on which President Ekufadu and his government would want to go on. So I get surprised if we ask what he's going to do. The citizen, as we are, one of the key, I would say, weapon we have to speak directly to government is advocacy. So if you write letters to the, the government, the media is putting out documentaries doing your part. He puts together a committee to see to it that all these issues affecting us, that is Galamse, mm -hmm. are rectified and the corporates brought to book. A report was written by the chairman of the committee, and at the end of the day, that report was poo -pooed. So if you ask us this morning what the government have done so far, for me, they are my, doing My, my zero. question is that there has been a protest in the past, and we have I'm, not I'm seen... I'm coming to that. Yes. So do you think that another protest is a step in the I'm right direction? I'm coming to that. Okay. So these people who went on the streets to demonstrate... One key thing I ask myself, and everybody would want to know why these people were even arrested for the first one, the protest they did, and it has called for others to also now come out and say that we should free them and say no to the very things the first people protested against. Mm -hmm. As a people, one of the weapons we have, as I stated earlier, is advocacy. So if we spoke earlier, we assume the president didn't hear. We are speaking the second time. So all the people who are coming together for this protest, this protest I see from the interviews they have granted, it's very robust. So first off, they are starting from the point, going through an angle, giving a petition to Parliament. <coughs> they say they will give a petition to the Attorney General, and they will put up a giant screen at the Independence Square for every ordinary Ghanaian to come there and see documentaries that the various media houses have put out concerning the issues. So if the first one government didn't hear, this is the second one we are hoping that the government will hear. And looking at whatever has brought us here thus far, I would want to say that the government's posture of being insensitive towards us is very nauseating. And then I listened to the Attorney General make a statement in one of his Mr. the press Yesterday. encounters. Yes. And then he says that the protesters were on a course to instill fear 
in the public media demonstrations. The question I ask myself is that if people who are telling us of a menace are now the people instilling fear in us, Godfrey Dami, the first three words of his name represent a supreme being. But it is surprising that when he speaks, that is not seen in his conscience. So if the Galamse menace is not instilling fear in us enough, but the people who choose to talk about it are the ones instilling fear, that is the irony. Yesterday I had a conversation with a doctor friend. She's a, a, a lady and then she said she's wearing black to the hospital today. So the question I asked her was that, why black? Because if I am not feeling well in my hospital bed, and I see a doctor, where, a doctor approaching black, in black. Yes. <laughs> then I have my ideas actually, and I'm a corner. But she says that there are many things that a lot of people do not come out to join, not because they are not interested, uh, interested, but it's because of the kind of jobs they do. And if they leave for a while, it is kind of dire to, to assist them. So she is wearing black as a form of protest because she mentioned a certain fertility issue. And from a population point of view, I got scared. She said that this mercury we are consuming through the activities of Galamse is affecting our fertility. The sperm production of men, their testers, the ovulation of women and our productive is system. Is that so? I was very it's shocked. I'm like, here. really? Uh, because I've had a lot of conversations around it and nobody is tackling it from that angle. So as we are a youthful generation, because the people who are hitting the streets are the youth. So if after all this is said and done, you, you have worked very hard in an economy that there are no job opportunities for you, you hustle day in, day night to put food on your table, and then when it is time for you to give birth and reproduce, just by no fault of yours, because of a failed leadership, you are not able to produce. What does that to us as a people is that we would have a very large aging population and the dependency ratio would shoot. Because we are not reproducing. The, the younger generation will not be in that state to mm. reproduce. So the, the independency ratio will be very high. And then the theming youth now would be burdened with tax because our workforce will decline. So the few people who will be working as citizens will now be burdened with, with the with tax nets. And then at the end of the day, we are moving from frying pan to fire. All right. But one thing that I would want to say, ending to on this add, to end. topic, is that okay. as a people, we have always spoken against things that affect us. Let nobody make it look as if we are second class citizens. So if the citizens are complaining, then people who belong to the ruling party will now come and tell us that it is a collective effort and they have done their bit. And if it is not citizens, should just keep quiet and be in their corner. One thing they are forgetting is that if they are enjoying fat salaries, they are enjoying salaries that are paid by the ordinary Ghanaians. The very people who are affected by these Galamse issues are people who are not enjoying from the government. So what it is is that if we have lung cancer issues from inhaling these mercury substances, if we have kidney issues, if we are not able to give a fertility issues, if you give birth to a child with deformity, which will be a burden on the household income. At the end of the day, the people who are doing galamse and have been fingered by a report that has been poo pooed are people who can afford all these the, the treatments for all these issues we are going through. In our part of the world, lung cancer. It's, it's really difficult to fight and transplants are not even done in a part of the world. All right. So they have the money to All afford. Right. We do not have the money to Let afford. Me come to so this now. morning we jump into the demonstration and tell the government that the people are not happy with him. So it's time he takes his job serious. All right. Rodlin, hmm. step in the right direction. <laughs> yes, I think so. Okay. Um, good morning, Ghana. I'd like to say a happy birthday to my presidential candidate, Mr. Alangere Martin. Oh, it's his birthday today. Oh, yeah. happy birthday. Oh, what a blunder. We all, we all, uh, yes, we are did, all busy campaigning. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to um, so, Alangere Martin from all of us here at TV3 going out to you, sir. Okay. So um, that was on the 29th, that, that Sunday just passed. Okay. We had a press conference and he showed solidarity with the um, protesters, the young protesters. The detained ones. Exactly, the detained ones. Um, and he has also given support. He's been able to gather some um, legal support for them as well. Um, a few of us went to visit, um, but we, although we didn't see them, um, they knew that we were out there um, supporting them. Um, we did that because we realized that as young people, they were concerned about the things that are happening in this country. 
and they came out in their numbers someone would say they didn't have those kind of huge large numbers but they made a point their their case was well put out um, the international community got wind of it we watched it on cnn we watched it on al jazeera which meant that the message went out at a time that our president was talking about environmental issues um, in the un we were busy the young people in this country were busy trying to drum home to him that things were not good and that we do not um, uh, feel that he was tackling the galamsey issue properly um, it is rather unfortunate to think that um, some government um, communicators would come out and say, ask him that the um, protesters be given bail or be let free. Uh, it's like asking for rapists and criminals to be let free. I find that very appalling. I think we should take politics out of all this. And if it's anything at all, you know, when you make such statements like um, protesters being... Uh, uh, those condemning the, the, the police and the courts for keeping the protesters in might as well be talking about the release of rapists and criminals and armed robbers. This was said by Mr. Miracles Abwaje. And I just wanted to tell him that, yes, um, why should the people's lives, the Ghanaian lives, be disrupted by the fact that an MPP government is in power, a government that has disrupted the lives of Ghanaians by haircuts, by the fact that people lost their jobs, by the closure of banks, by the fact that lives are so, so difficult now. We can hardly make ends meet. Poverty is looking at us in the face. We cannot even afford a decent square meal a day. And you think that protesting for what is life, water is life, and protesting for our river bodies, for the water that we will drink, for the lives of the yet unborn is such that we should be comparing them to rapists and criminals. I think the greatest rapists and criminals are the pen thieves who are sitting there enjoying the leisure and everything that is coming out of this Galamse issue. Those who can come and sit by on our TV stations and bring out gold bars to show us that they have been able to acquire such from the Galamse sites. Those are the criminals, the rapists. Those are the ones that should be in jail and not those protesters out there. It is unfair. We are also asking and we demand and we agree and accept everything that these guys are fighting for, that this country de deserves a reset. We need to look at our mindsets again and know that it's not everything that is good. Right now, when you look in the papers, you're you are seeing government officials actually agreeing that Galamse is a good thing. Who said Galamse is a good thing? We are talking about illegal gold mine. Gather and sell. That's what it says. It didn't say go and destroy the forest. It didn't say go and destroy river uh, bodies. It didn't say go and, and, and do things that would create mayhem for us or chaos for the future. We cannot afford to import water. We can't. We are already importing food. Basic agricultural produce, we are importing them. We are importing cassava. We are importing cotonbri. We are importing okra. We are importing everything. All the cereals we are importing. And you want us to import water. Why? Even in countries that are deserted, they have water. They are, they are trying ways and means to give their people water. People have even been able to desalinate sea water because water is life. This is not a political issue. I am asking and begging our political elite not to turn the Galamse issue into a political issue. It is not a political issue. It is between life and death. With the demonstration going on, I'm part of it. The only You're thing going is, to be on the I, will, today. I will be on the streets as well because we've started our campaign. Look out for the Yellow Army. We are going to be everywhere because we demand that Ghanaians sit up and make sure that they vote for the right people. It is not just voting because this is my party, this is my tribesman, this is my dad. No, vote for that one person who is going to come, make the changes, create the opportunities for all of us. There's so much we can do without destroying our lands. Yeah. We have a 10-point agenda on Galamse. A 10-point agenda yes, on Galamse. Yes, on Galamse, on how to fight Galamse. But, and, and we want Ghanaians is, is to Is this know. public? Have we seen it? Yes, it's, it's public. It's in our... It's uh, in the yellow it's book. It's in our yellow, yellow book. It's in the yes. yellow book. Uh, it's, it's in the in yellow our, book. Yes, it's in our correct. yellow book. You can you can look at yeah, that. That's but the most interesting thing is that we have come out firmly. We are not beating about the bush. 
the movement for change and the alliance for revolutionary change is saying that if you go back after we have reclaimed these lands and you try anything you will go in for life all right we will jail mean? you for life all it right, is not mean? playing about the bush let's come to dr Kua. dr Kua, why is the government not responding to the call and cries of citizens to declare state of emergency to stop galamsey okay good morning again i i don't think it's fair to to say that the government is not responding to. So we are all aware about this Galamsi issue. It's, it's been something that the country has been grappling with for years. Different approaches have been tried to tackle this issue from since time immemorial. And a lot has been done under the Sikhwadu administration to tackle the menace. Granted, we haven't achieved the results that we all wanted. The waters are not clean. It is obviously a serious problem that um, our water They're actually getting worse now. Well, obviously, if you are pol water, pollution in water and things like mercury will be cumulated, so it will get worse over a period of time. It's, it's something that will keep it's compounding. Ongoing. Exactly. Yes. So that I think one thing that I've missed out of all of this um, conversation about everything we've been having with regards to the protesters is that we've moved away from a situation of discussing solutions. Okay, what are the solutions? Of, of discussing solutions to the Galamsey issue. Because I think that's, that should really be the focus. Just to quickly talk about what happened with the protests and everything, because I heard someone on here say that the reasons why the protesters were documented were not well, um, well were not documented or something. What? But there's no reason why the protesters were arrested or so. But we were all here in this country and we saw numerous videos of there's nothing wrong with peaceful protests. There's absolutely nothing. I, I don't think anybody said there was no oh, reason. Oh, she said something. Oh, Louisa? Uh, yes. That there's no reason yes, that they were, that's they were that's arrested. Good. Okay. And you're saying? I, I didn't say that. Yeah, because I didn't hear it too. I didn't say okay. that. So, well, there's, there's a well-documented evidence as to why they were arrested. It's not because they were protesting against Galam. That's not why they were arrested. They were arrested for blocking streets. They were arrested for destroying property. They were arrested for causing fear. And I don't know if you saw that video of the young, um, the young woman and her daughter in a CRV. Okay, we, we can't really hear you. I think there's a, there's a connection. with. So we'll, uh, we'll come back okay, to you in a moment. But then the, the, the issue, I think, that there has been a loud outcry about the arrest of these young people mm -hmm. is the blatant breach or apparent breach of their fundamental human rights. Potato. So yeah. that's the first one. The that's that they're so required to be brought before to a court this, in to, 48 to, hours. To. While we we fix your your microphone, I just want to tell you a few of the things which the complaints about the arrests border on. Okay. Not that they were arrested only, okay. but also the breach of their human rights, as have been reported. Just yesterday, just yesterday. We heard from their lawyers that some of them have been moved. They've been moved from the known places of um, the known places where they have been kept mm -hmm. to other locations which are unknown. Mm -hmm. Their lawyers have not been informed, and the protesters themselves have not been told why they have been moved. So the lawyers currently do not know where some of them have been moved to. And all of these things border on their human rights because we know what the law is now. At least since the the arrest happened we have we have all heard and learned mm -hmm. about the rights of people who are arrested okay. from being told why they are arrested in a language they understand to being brought before a court in 48 mm -hmm. hours the fact that they should not be held beyond 48 hours without them having their day in court the fact that they have been denied bail for dis dis misdemeanors the, the reasons are endless so those are the reasons we are complaining you get it those are the reasons we are complaining but but okay, I, I think I think you're good now. Yes. Yeah, so back to my point. That the point I was trying to make is that protesting is something that every citizen is entitled to. It is enshrined in our constitution. Yes. We in the MPP have used protest several times over the years. Mm -hmm. So nobody's going to sit here and say they shouldn't have protested. Mm -hmm. But where your rights end, your rights come with responsibilities. Where yours end, someone starts. So when you, and I was asking you again if you saw that video of the young woman in the CRV and her daughter who were mobbed by the protesters in the, on the 37 interchange, if you haven't seen it, 
intersection. I'll, I'll send it to you. There was a truck driver with a pack of some blocks in his car, also mobbed. There was a guy on the motor. Uh, okay. There was a guy on the motor. Am I still not audible? We, we're having challenges with your, wow. your microphone. I'll come to Nanaya and then they'll fix it. And, and then um, I'll give you extra time to make a point. Nanaya. Yes. Are you protesting today? You're in red and black too. Ah. No, I mean, they're sharp. They are protesting. Ah, sharp. Why not? I'm dressed for it. I have my. my you are dressed for it, yes. yes. I have my trainers in my car. So. You have your trainers in your bag? Yes. I see. So. But you see, good morning to everybody. Good morning to my sisters here. Good morning. Is it Ajoa? Ekua. Uh, Ekua. Good morning. I have a niece called Ekua. Good morning to Auntie. Good morning, good morning to my Louisa. Good morning to you. Good morning to Ghana. You see, now you keep asking the question that government has not responded. Are you sure they have not responded? What's the response? Ah, it is the arrest. <laughs> you don't know that the arrest me they have responded. Telling you that don't go close to this galam say matter. That's the response you 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 are deciphering from. No, the but arrest. my dear, what is the meaning of the arrest and everything? That is the that that is the response, straight mm -hmm. and simple. They're saying that the arrest is because of the acts of unlawlessness. My dear, you see, and, we, and, and we, of lawlessness, and not because of the protest. Please, we itself. went to an, an evening with um, Honorable Alan Chemetin. If you tell me the arrest is not a response, then I have a problem because government hasn't said anything about the yeah. arrest, and these people are Ghanaians, and we need to also process the argument very well. The people were remanded by a court of competent jurisdiction. And if you are remanded, you are remanded based or if, if you are jailed, based on your charge sheets. So they have been placed before court. But what was in that charge sheet? We had an evening with um, Honorable Alan Chemerton. And he said something. I mean, marvelous evening. He said something. He said he is surprised. That the police was with the protesters the first day, the second day, and you charge them with unlawful assembly. Why is that so? <laughs> you are with us, and you say unlawful assembly. They were also unlawful. Do you get me? How can you be with a group of people who have assembled unlawfully? So the response that we are getting from government is the arrest. Telling you that don't go close to Galamsey. But you see, government will also get its response. It's unfortunate that it will affect citizens. On the 10th of October, TUC says that they are going on a demonstration. They are going on strike. Uh, on a strike, a protest, a strike. Do you get me? That is a dangerous thing. I mean, anytime TUC says they are going on a strike, I look at medicine and education. Pretty much everything. Transportation, don't be too everything. Sure. Pardon? I don't be too sure. That they will go. They already well, uh, no, so the point is that, <laughs> the point is that these are the two things that I always feel that what is going to happen to medicine to help. And talking about medicine, we send our prayers to um, Asante Bedi, to the secretary, to the president, that is responding to treatment. I guess maybe he's a colibu, because if he's responding to treatment, I guess he's a Kolebu or UGM. I, I thought they, they said he was not yes, in the country. Exactly. Uh -huh. So if he's not in the country, that is it. You see, Louisa was talking about the fact that organs and function, we are going to die. What do you mean? Ah, mercury. Cyanide. Cyanide. All these chemicals. We are not talking about body function. If you have body issues with your sperm, at least you are alive. You can adopt. You have issues with your kidney. You'll be begging around to do dialysis. You'll survive. But what about if you die? What about, because they don't care. When they are sick, they don't go to hospital in Ghana. They don't. They drink perrier water. Auntie was saying that there is no... Ghana has imported water. Go to the American shop. Yes, there is imported water yes. in Ghana. And that is what they can buy and drink. They don't care about us. You see, this government has turned the democracy into an autocracy. We are in a democracy that is an autocracy. How is that? How is that an autocracy? Please, do we have to tell you? Because they do what they want. They don't think about us Ghanaians. If they really thought about us, they would declare a state of emergency and ensure 
that this Galamse issue is dealt with. Look at the statements from their own people. Dr. Friye, my brother, I was just disappointed in what he said. A medical doctor who knows the effect of mercury and cyanide. A medical doctor, not an ordinary person. He's gone to school for five years. He's, I, I believe if he wasn't in politics, maybe his level would be a consultant. Not a resident, a consultant. He's saying that they are not going to stop Galamse today, tomorrow, forevermore. Do you understand? And I was highly disappointed. That let it come from an ordinary person who knows nothing about medicine. Who knows nothing about human anatomy. Let it come from somebody, not a medical doctor. You see, they are not prepared to let it go. It is making them rich and they are thinking about their elections. That if they do that, they will lose in the Galamse areas. But in 2020, did they lose? Did MPP lose the election? Or they lost and they, didn't, they did something and they won? Because I don't see why they are saying that they will lose. Based on Galamse. So even if you do the right thing by Ghanaians and you lose, and so what? What will then happen? At least you have left a legacy that you fought Galamse and you lost. It is a good legacy. Nelson Mandela went to prison for 27 years, and at the end of the day, South Africa is now free from apartheid. So somebody should sacrifice for somebody. Somebody, they should die a little for Ghanaians to live. The MPP should know that they should die a little. Now, now the reason Apa is saying that Baumia is the best person because he's going to continue the transformation agenda. Transformation in debt. Who will be alive for him to come and transform? When we have Galam, look at our waters, look at our forests, look at our river bodies. They don't care. Out of how many regions, I've heard 14 regions in, in, in this country, there's Galamse everywhere. Now, Shoko, can you just imagine that we are approaching our deaths openly, as if you have been put on death row, and you know when you are going to die, it is approaching gradually, slowly, and you are always thinking about it. Today, when I was batting and water entered my mouth, I said, hey, <laughs> what kind of water has entered my mouth? These days, I try to use uh, sachet water to brush my teeth. But even that one, the, the one that we even drink, sachet water, do you know where it is coming from? Look at the woman who said that they use alum to clean the water. Do you know the dangers? To prepare a cheque. To pre prepare a cheque. Me too, yeah. I like a cheque. You like a cheque. Nashoko. That was very disturbing. I am telling that is not the only disturbing yeah. one. It is all over the place. Our water has become like mad. And you don't care. You are doing politics with this. That is why I'm saying that this government, they've turned a democracy into an autocracy. Auntie said that they went to visit the protesters who have been jailed. And they could not see them. Why? Why? And they've been moving around as if we are in a janta. You see, these things happen in a janta. We are not in a janta. Do you get me? This is very disgraceful. This is very disrespectful. In a country like Ghana in 2024, yeah. people are being treated like we are in a janta. That we are in a revolution. That as if there is a coup. That you move people around from place to place, from center to center, from corner to corner. Uh, let, me, let me come to Dr. Ekoa now. Um, your, yes, your, so your sound has been restored. You, what, are you giving my time back to me? I've what timed everybody. You. I, will say. I thought you were you. done. Who t you, how did you think? You cut me. No, you stopped talking. How is that that's not talking? Oh, okay, you end. Uh, how can I? You, can't cut you me. end. Make your point. What point am I making? Because your point was well made. Your point was well made. Thank you, Nanaya. You thank me, yes. Dr. Ekoa. So, <laughs> as I was saying, I, I would have hoped that by this time we would have moved into discussing solutions, which I would do at the end of my submission. But the tangent we were going on before was to actually tell Ghanaians what led to the situation we have now. First, on, on the Saturday that these protests started, and everything is well documented on social media, and I hope you can show some of the videos to your people, so that everything is put into proper context. We live in a country where there's rule of law contrary to what people are saying. So you, there are situations where you ban property and paraphernalia of another political party. That can even be said that, oh, it's an MPP and DC matter. The police just let them do what they were doing. 
then into the issues of disturbing the ordinary citizens that, that were, were trying to use that stretch. The mobbing of the woman and her daughter in the CRV. And you could see the fear on their faces. I don't think any of us sitting here would have been happy if we were put in that situation. So let's just be fair when situations come up. There's no need to politicize <coughs> this. When you, you are absolutely allowed to protest. It's something that everybody does. And you, it's, we all have the right to ensure that these protests are peaceful so that we do not detract from the activity of protesting. That's not the way we expect people to protest. You can't want to instill fear. Because if I was in that CRV car with someone else, or if I was in that car with my mother, I would have been scared because what, you are suddenly mauled by a group of men and it's, it's something that is scary. It didn't happen in one instance. There were several people that used the road that were mobbed and insulted. These people were insulting the people and you won't come out and, and come and do this, blah, blah, blah. Is that, is, that, is that the way forward? Is that what we are trying to preach now as Ghanaians? And now is they that have the been way, arrested. Let me, is, that the, is, that, is that what we are preaching now? One even went as far as to say in Chi that's Ghana for Moye Moa in Tiebi Wua Na That's the situation that happened. Some, there are videos of them attacking the police. The police are formed like a riot shield. You are attacking them. Somebody took a vehicle from a police car and a threw key. it a key for, and threw it away. Can you, is that, have you seen anybody attempt that? Even if you, you were, like, I, have you seen anyone attempt that? How would you have the audacity and the hubris to enter a police vehicle and take the key? These are not issues that should be merely glossed over. And to me, with all the actions that they engaged in, it made it seem to me that, no, maybe they weren't really out there to protest the issue that's on the heart of everybody. And to think that people are sitting here and because we do not endorse the actions, they, 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 the actions that they did on over the weekend, doesn't, that means that we don't care about the issue. It's, it's, it's the farthest thing from the truth. We are all very interested in the well-being of the country. We are all very interested in purifying our water bodies. And we've already sat, even prior to the resurgence of this Galam Sea fight, the MPP had gone around on a stakeholder engagement to engage people in these small-scale mining communities to come up with a plan that would work, that would improve and build on the things that we've done because for people to sit here and say nothing has been done in the Galamse fight is a big fat lie. We haven't achieved the results that we were all looking for. Everybody is going to admit that. And as government, we have to take responsibility. Would you say that and government has failed in the fight against Galamsey? The statement I'm going to make on the issue is the one I've already made. We're, we've made a lot of progress. We what, haven't what, what achieved... What's the progress you have we, made? Okay. Can, can you so speak we've, to that? We have, we, there was an alternative livelihood program where a lot of the small-scale mine, those who were ax engaging in Galamsey, were trained in alternative livelihoods. They were given seedlings, they were trained in agriculture and whatnot. Not. Four thousand of where, them. Where, where were they trained in agriculture? Where in the mining, happen? I would, I would, I'll find the the document. All these yeah, things I'll, I'll are documented. And the then the documents that the documents that the, she re the, 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 the referenced, it's you speak even of, in there. I assume it's supposed to plant fa farms. Yes. The same farmlands have been destroyed by Galamsey yesterday alone. Mm. In fact, for the last three days, we've been getting consistent calls from people whose cocoa farms have been destroyed exactly. because of Galamsey. Exactly. Now, do you, are you so, are you so aware that the people whose cocoa? Let me just ask the question. Uh -huh. So, are we taking one step forward and three steps backwards? If we are training, you allow me to explain everything, I will their say farmlands. no. The, you are giving people seedlings. These cocoa farmers that their um, farms are being destroyed. Are you aware that they sell the, their farmlands to these small-scale miners? No. This person who called did not. Yeah, sell but his most farm. of the issues. Even the, did you hear the the chief? I think it was. And the that's the point. Recently. Why are we not clamping down? Because the president has so the power. So allow me explain oh, everything. Farmers. The president does not have the power to prevent somebody from selling their land. No, he has the part yeah. to clamp down on, on Galamsey. Yeah, so I'm mining. explaining to you what the things we've done so far and how we uh, plan to improve the situation. So if you allow me land, you'll see the full picture. Oh, okay. So you ask what we've done, and I told you about the alternative livelihood pro program. The fact that people see that there's a lot of money, and to sit here and think that this issue is something that is, is political and it's just the um, government, it's, it's just trivializing the issue and not understanding. People that engage in this small-scale mining, there are videos of them digging under their beds in their rooms because of what they think they can gain. That one too is an, is, you can't say that that's, that's an MPP person or this. It, <coughs> people yes, are doing this the under point, their beds. But the point is people that. People are going, people that, are jailed the, the next day. They come out and do the same thing. These people doing these so things. you have to employ a more comprehensive approach to be able to deal with this. The 
activity and, and of they're, they're using law enforcement right has been tried. The NDC um, rep was sitting here and I didn't hear her say anything about what they did. But they tried. They also f tried to fight Galamse. At that time, documentaries were also... Um, th there was one by Anas, Aremiao Anas. Al Jazeera, I think it was Africa Watch, Ghana Gold. You can go and watch it. There are so many documentaries at that time as well. So we can't sit here... If we sit here and discuss the issue like this, we will come in 10 years and then we'll still be discussing it. The it is about report. Yes points fingers at specific people. Yes, it points fingers at specific people across the political divide. Yes. So yes, no, I, I'm not I'm not yes. talking so about what I'm trying to about say who is belongs that. to which political party in the report. Mm -hmm. I'm saying people have been fingered. What has been done? to these people. In fact, what has been done with the report? What has been done? No. So what I was talking about was the things we have done. And if you, the rep, since you've quoted this report, I'm very sure you've read it. So the things that the interministerial community did are well documented there. The training of 4,000 small scale miners in the proper way to do mining at UMAT was done. The, uh, 5, 000, there were over 5,000 uh, miners who were previously involved in Galamsi who were inv um, invited you know, to try and sanitize the sector to come and then um, so that we can sit down, license them, and then this thing can be done better. 5,500 or so of them were actually given licenses and their concessions were ma well mapped out. I think one thing that's also very important to distinguish is the activities of small scale mining, legitimate small scale miners from Galamsi, the people that are mining in the water the people that are using mercury to get the gold out of the oil and these are the problems and if we don't start to try and differentiate so that we can actually attack those that are doing us harm we are going to be just running in circles on this issue so now let me move on to the solutions that we have come up with okay. based on the fights that the things we put up and what we've learned okay so when you are doing anything like even when you're running a company you run into challenges you do things it doesn't work you pivot and you move around it so we have done a lot of things in the fights for between 2017 and now and we've learned a lot from that and so after that we are saying let's move away from the approach that we had and moved move to approach where other countries have actually done that this Which issue is of small scale mining is not an issue that occurs just in ghana South Africa is grappling with it. Brazil has been grappling with it. Do you mean Galamsey or small-scale mining? Small-scale mining, Galam what they call artisanal small-scale okay. mining is, is Galamsey. The kind of scene, people just using pickaxes to dig under their beds. Illegal mining Yes, illegal mining. Yes, illegal mining. It's not, it's yeah. not artisanal. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not yeah. They it's combine it all together. Yeah. So now we have, I hope, now I'm happy that we are illegal all mining. trying to distract, separate the two. So if someone has a concession and they are doing small-scale mining, it's not Galamsey. I'm glad that we've all agreed to this. Okay. So as I was saying, we have looked at the approaches of all these other countries and what they've, do, what they've done and what we have done locally to be able to come up with a more comprehensive plan that we are very sure will be able to tackle with this, will be able to tackle this issue. And these are the kinds of conversations I expect us to be having so by what, now. What, so the, our yeah, plans now are that we've realized plans. that, first, I was very happy that our, our running mate, Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe, said we should both, both the political parties should come together and sign an anti galamsey pact so that the acts of sabotage, that's some very very well documented. I'm sure you've seen some of those videos of Kweku Boye and Tony Obe, all those acts of sabotage that went on. We can now, both of us sit on the table and say, we are not politicizing this issue. Let's deal with it head on. <coughs> Obviously, we are in government, so we are taking the lead. We are not checking blame or saying we should split. With, no, but you cannot also be sabotaging the effort while we are trying to fight it. So the first thing is the anti galamsey Pact. The second thing that we are very well hoping to do is to set up a minerals development bank because one of the issues that come up with Bank. Yes. Yeah, Let me land. Yes. I mean, see, when you were talking, I didn't no, leave any or interrupt. Yes. Minutes, well, her, her microphone went off. You know? yes. yes. So as I was saying, so, so, to set up so, a mineral so development let's, let's bank. Let's land. So, Yes, to set land. up, you want to hear solutions. I'm giving yeah. you solutions. I'm not going to sit here and just complain and point at my because I could. So what I'm saying, to set up a mineral development bank, because if you look at the issue critically, the people with chamfan machines putting it on the river and mining cannot afford to do it on the concession scale that we can easily <coughs> regulate and ensure that they reclaim the land. So set up a bank to make funds available to these people. After you've trained them in how to do um, small-scale mining properly, you get rid of the Chinese 
Chinese factor because that's how the Chinese people come in. They provide the funds. So it sets up the Minerals Development Bank. Two, you have to make the licensing regime so that it's easier for us to license and be able to regulate it. Won't it to be easier again? No. You know so that, because yeah. the you know that in this government alone over a thousand licenses And I told you how that those licenses were give, giving out. <laughs> if you read the report, it is there. 5,000 miners applied when we were fighting. And so when you say you want to make it easier for more licenses Put it to all, be given, what, make, what do you mean Make exactly? it all yeah. under the Minerals Commission so that those who, you are not going to say that, oh, the licensing process is too cumbersome, so you just go use your pickaxe or, or use your chamfan machine on the river. We are trying to make sure that everybody is in the regulatory net so that we can tackle it. Yes, the but second, those in the, the regulatory thing, net right now are over a thousand under this administration yes. alone and complaints, the allegations in the report also suggest that no people with these small scale mining licenses are going beyond the bounds no of the yes, licenses that have been so given if you to allow them. Me to finish and I engage all. in Galam says it's an approach you, that you as, have to look as, as at. As you talk about the plans to, to resolve the issue, can you speak to the plans to restore our water bodies and the plans to restore the farmlands and the environment? If you allow me to finish, you will see that it is in, it's there. There's a whole plan. Yeah, I, in, yeah, I think yes. that's the biggest concern. Okay, the so I'll quickly bodies, move there. Farmlands. So can you speak one, to that? One of the issues that we are seriously grappling with is the use of mercury by these people that usually mine and on the... Cyanide. And to usually mine in, in this river to try and extract the ore. When which has even been proven that it's not the most effective way to extract the gold out of the ore. So it will be. We have two minutes more. Yes, it will be. It won't be too difficult to convince these people doing these things the wrong way, even if they don't care so much about the good of the country that there's a better way to do this. So what we are doing is introducing the mercury free gold catcher machines, some of which have already arrived, so that then you can use that to purify the ore without using mercury. Another thing we are looking at that is going to deal with these issue, the issue especially of the water bodies is the establishment of settlement dams. Because if you've ever been to a Galamse area, what you see is that there's, there are belts or, or whatnot and they are using water to wash these ores and usually the water is returned to the closest river. So we've noticed that and we've seen the other people, responsible miners in this area, are using innovative ways to make sure that the water they use doesn't reach, doesn't go back into the river. This is what we call this, um, the settlement dams. So we are going to build a lot of settlement dams as well so that the people who are regulated are in the nets now, the water they use will not return to the rivers. Then the reclamation efforts that we, that we started, we are going to intensify that. So if you are, what it is now, if you are in the regulatory nets and you have a, a proper license, there's oversight. They will come, EPA will come and check. So many other um, agencies will ensure that you are doing the right thing. And you are, you are enshrined to reclaim that land. So if you are given this concession and you are done, you are supposed to reclaim it. And it will be supervision will be done so that you can reclaim it and then okay. there's also a reclamation fund for that we're okay. also in introducing river wardens you who are going to be specifically to trained on this right on this issue eight, eight, obviously we've 30 30 tried minutes. using the um, normal law enforcement officers again. and we saw how easily they were able to be induced so we are training special river wardens who are okay. going to after all of this that we've done to uh. stand uh, to basically okay. police the river bodies then another issue the last one that you can move on is the issue of prospecting licenses we want to do Away. So the government is going your to take that up. responsibility. Your time is up. I, you're Give not it answering the, the question I'm about how you have a nice chocolate drink. I just told you about your settlement. Your time, I told you about the up. settlement down right you. now. Yes. Uh, when I come back to you, I think what, you're going to finish. Your time are we finishing this? Nanaya, in all fairness, a lot of questions were asked to Ikua. And it's fair to allow her but the she, time. She just, she, I know she that she's spoken for, for longer no, no, please, time than you. Please. But everybody here no, no, asked the question please, which she had to address. Just a minute. So that's we why I gave her extra time. Now. She's talking yes, about I, 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 I understand yes. you. I understand your concern. But we should let her future. speak so well, we know if she's going to do about things we've done now. All right. I'm going to come back to Louisa. I'm going to come back. And yes, we have extra time. We are not going to talk. Louisa. Are you, are you convinced by any of the things? I am the not convinced. That I, that in fact, I am infuriated. <laughs> yes, very infuriated. A settlement dam said by a government that promised one village one dam exactly. and didn't even pro deliver on that promise. Why should we believe you? And then it is surprising that the MPP rep will sit here and make it look as if we are all Ghanaians ah. watching the show this morning. Do not have brains to reason for ourselves. It is very disheartening. The painful part of this whole thing is that when they were giving students, we did an alternative livelihood and they were supposed to put the students where? Are the students not supposed to be put in the soil? That same soil that is infested with my, uh, mercury? Where are the students supposed to, to, to be planted? It's not 
on that same soil. And then the funny part is, government cannot stop anybody from selling their farmlands and all of that. Now, you were a media person. From all the documentaries you have put out, one thing that the farmers say is that when they come around you, to do this Galamse activities. They come as people who have political apparatus as their full backing force. So they start digging all around you and your farmland is left in the middle. Where do you pass to go and farm? That is the situation. And they are using party apparatus to put fear in these people, to force them into cohesion to give up their farmlands. And you tell us what, governments cannot force people to sell their farmlands, but governments can sit down for their appointees to buy lands around them, do Galamse, and force people to give up their livelihoods. And then again, did I hear say that um, rights and responsibilities that we have responsibility. The president, as he is, we voted for him. The rights that he's enjoying and the privileges he's enjoying now is not because he's done out of Danko Kufado. It's because he's a president. And that office comes with responsibilities as he delivered on that mandate. He has failed abysmally. And surprisingly, we sit here and say that Matthew Opoku Prempe said what? We should have a pattern and all of that. Is he not the same person who went on a podium to say that they are going to give back excavators? It is also documented. Since today, that's where documented have been abused. Matthew Opuku Prempe is documented saying that they are going to give excavators to people to mine. They are not going to stop it today but or tomorrow. Are, are so what is the part going to do? Or are those people small scale miners? Legal miners. So now and let me tell you one good thing. Time. It's good you ask me this question. It's bringing a reflection. The 1,696 licenses they have given from 2017 as we are speaking, that they are saying they gave to people who apply it is their blatant lie. Why? Those licenses were given to MPP apparatchiks under the guise of community false. mining. This is absolutely Will false. you keep quiet? No, no, no but, 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 but now nah, let me land. Interjecting. You make nah, a nah, 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 let me point. land. When we said we were putting a cap on Galapse. Mm -hmm. As part of the things that this MPP government did was to introduce community mining. So already there are people in the sector who do not know their whereabouts as we are made to believe. And now we have to put a stop to it, to give them measures to do, to make whatever they are doing more legalized and all of that. One would have expected that the licenses would have gone to these people who were already on the ground doing gather and sell as Anne Rodlin said. But no, they brought up a whole new policy direction called community mining. If already what we have is destroying the, the waters and our forest reserves, why bring up community mining? And one good thing they did, because the president is a lawyer, they looked for the loopholes in the constitution. And one thing they did that is so annoying and infuriating is when they, they put that clause in there that we can now go into forest reserves to mine. So the licensing were given to the people who went to the forest reserves to mine. And all the people she's saying that they brought home to give training to, that is a blatant lie. And if we sit here and I'll say that we are going to now do this bold solutions, we are giving bold solutions. The question is that who is in government now? Is it NDC? Is it CPP? Well, is it Movement for Change? Is it APC? It is the NPP government. So if you are piloting anything, you don't pilot a project for seven good years. No. You pilot for a while, you go back to the drawing table and you revise it and you give it a new direction. So from 2017 to 2024. Are you speaking to the solutions which she says they are, they are planning on introducing? Why are they not they implementing the solutions now? That is what I'm asking. Because you need power to be able to act on behalf of the people. The power is given to you. We are waiting for what? As Nanaya said, you are waiting for the people to die out of consuming this mercury. You are waiting for, and I'm not surprised because Kathleen Adi, the chairperson of NCC says that this whole thing about Galamse we are shouting about is an extension of the party in Heska because vote buying activities are funded by Galamse activities. So in the run up to election, <laughs> From now to December, they are not going to. So that's why you're telling us because if you are, you are, you are in government you now, are, you are quoting and you somebody. cannot. Yes. Okay, but we can. I, I read it from. I read it from your, your oh, porter. Okay. So it's it's a quote by somebody who I, has I, not I, what they said. I brought it from. Okay. I read it from your porter. Okay. And then if we are saying that we are in power now, and then we would have to wait till we come to power again, that is the credibility crisis I always talk so about. Yes. Let me come to Rodlin. Yes. Uh, I I just want to say that when it comes to solutions. I, I guess all of us have some form of solutions. Um, the whole problem we are having now is that we have got our river bodies uh, polluted. 
that is the first and foremost the most important thing that we have to do and and we have decided alan Shremantin feels that given the note within one year in fact it should be an immediate ban on on galamsey so that we can reclaim our river bodies and reclaim the lands and the same people who are doing the the galam sale will be the same people that would be used to reclaim the lands and they will be paid trained funded and then shown how to actually mine the proper way <coughs> that is very important the reason why cocoa farmers are selling is she's giving one reason the other reason is that there's a policy failure people don't have jobs and what do you expect them to do when, the, when there's so much unemployment in the system, and when you are buying cocoa, they, they have to buy fertilizers, they are not making enough from their cocoa farms, they have to send their kids to school, they have to feed themselves, the NHIS is not working properly, they will by all means have to sell their cocoa farms. So that, that for me is one reason why, another reason why they are selling their cocoa, their cocoa farms. And I, 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 I am asking, why should we believe you when you talk about settlement dams? One village, one dam. We didn't see Ayo. One village, one dam. It has cost us so much to the extent that we do not have food. Because we were depending on one village, one dam to be able to give us uh, one village, one, what, one district, one factory. factory. It didn't happen. We ended up now sitting here in Ghana today buying kenke for seven cities and five cities. Buying tomatoes were expensive, buying onions, buying cost of everything. The cost of living is high based on the fact that we believed you that you were going to give us one village one dam to move into one district one uh, a factory and it never happened there is no time for the mpp government to do anything the best that they can do is to just live quietly without any fights because at the end of the day you have messed up you have failed abysmally and the Ghanaian deserves much much better than All the right. kind of governance that you have shown us All and right. if you let, do let, not let me, understand i'm going to ask and read about the protector of england i'm going to come to that you, um, but let me come to nanaya and then we'll give you the final word on this issue okay all right nanaya what question are you asking no um, if, when rodling was talking um Ikua was talking you seem to have a lot of concerns with some of the things she said you didn't so, have any concerns i asked her the concerns i had no, no, I know you're upset because of um, the allocation of, are you, are you, of time. Are you in my body? You've already told me why you're upset. <laughs> so, because, so, 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 please, please, please. so please, let's, please use, let's use the rest of the time. Me, I wasn't, go, wasn't going to speak, but my, I respect my auntie. So what about me? You are my little girl. You are done with me. I'm done with you. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. So the point is that, right, everything that we are talking about borders on commitment. Commitment? Yes. The MPP is not committed to dealing with the matter. So no matter what you say, no matter what you do, you can jump and, and, and uh, I mean, somersault. You see, this group of people, they are so ungrateful and they are not graceful to Ghana because we have given them the opportunity to rule this country. And do, they don't even respect us. They don't care. They just come us by telling us beautiful things in 2016, 2020, and we voted for them blindly. We didn't know who they were. We didn't interrogate their character. We didn't look into the past to see which people we are going to deal with. And today we are here today. We are almost about to die. What my doctor here is saying is that you see a medical doctor, She's talking about the future, futuristic. We are not talking about the future. We want it now. So if you have these plans, impl implement them now. The next how many days, 60 something days, implement it. Let's see if they will work. You don't go and put it in a book and say that this, this is your plan. They say some of the plans have They've started the like which are the seedlings of, of, of some of the, the wh wh which which no, earth? Mercury free gold kachamish. You can Google some of them. Are where is it now? Where, where, where is I it? I don't know. I, we, we haven't heard, we don't, we don't know about it. Problem. How is I'm it going? You. How is it going to help us immediately in the shortest no, possible time? Now, Shoko, please, the, in the shortest yeah, possible yeah. time, where, when, how, what. It, I mean, we, we are in a crisis. 
the, 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 the government, they don't want to what, declare a state of emergency. Because we are in a state of emergency. When, when you, you, you see death staring in your face, it's a state of emergency. Death, which is no, uh, no fault of yours, that you haven't done anything wrong. But inadvertently, if you are not careful, you fall into a trap. You see, the, the galamse that we are seeing has, is like a landmine. You can step in it anyhow through your food, through the water you drink, through the environment in which you live. You see, when they talk about rule of law, hmm? I was so worse to work on. People what, were maimed, were injured. Who was put before a court of competent jurisdiction? It was in, investigated. The reports came out. What happened to it? Eight people died in 2020 till today. We are in 60 something days to election. We don't know who killed them. Eight Ghanaians, full blooded Ghanaians, they died. That one is good. Two legs good, four legs bad. You see, Equia here was talking about um, the Chinese people are the people who bring in the, who bring the Chinese into this country. We have borders, <laughs> we have customs, we have immigration. How do they get entry into Ghana? Before you enter into any country, there's a border. There's a seaport. There's a land. There is air. How do they enter? Who allows them? Who gives them visas from China to come here? And when you get to any entry point, they ask you, what are you coming to do? What do they ask the Chinese who are in town? Who have set up even uh, shops and factories and supplying food and logistics to these Galamse areas? That's your call. These Chinese people, who brought them into Ghana? If you go to America right now, at the point, they will ask you, what are you coming to do? Mm, but people say all sorts of things. Like what? They, they say anything. But you can't say anything when you get to the, the port in this thing. And especially if you see a Chinese, you, you should be particular. If you care about this nation. And they come in droves. Yeah. They don't come as singletons. They come in droves. And when they are coming in droves, you, you, are, you don't become suspicious as an immigration officer or the head of immigration. They come in droves. And when they come, you have to ask them, where are you going to live, your address, maybe a hotel. You should be monitoring to even find out if those hotels, they are in there. You need to. So if you do not, I mean, you, you are not monitoring the movement of the Chinese in this country. What does it mean? Are you not also being complicit? Because the Chinese are a problem. They are the people who are doing the galamse, and you allow them to enter. That's what I'm asking. I mean, you allow them to. Why do you do that? So at the end of the day, me, I'm saying that this, this, this thing, this government, hmm, they are so ungrateful to us. We have voted for them. We, 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 we stood in the queue. We listen to their promises. They couldn't fulfill in 2016. In 2020, we voted them back into power and they've become worse. Today, they think that we don't know what we are about. So Nanado, His Excellency, would go and stand in Upper East and say that we should vote for Baumia. You see, the best gift that Ghana will give to itself is that on 7 December, we should go out and vote massively. Against, against the MPP. Okay. Massively. And not for the CPP. Against, I'm saying against, I didn't mention against the, I haven't finished my sentence. <laughs> against the MPP. They should go massively. Vote against them. Massively. And get them out of power. I'm telling you. This country needs to be delivered. Ghana needs to change. We should get the, the, the rule of the oppressor out of our midst. We should resist the rule of the oppressor. And this is the rule of the oppressor in this nation. These unfortunate people should be taken out. All right. Thank you, Nanaya. Um, Dr. Kwa, before you answer, before you, you go on with your points, there's a, there's a recurring question which I need to ask you mm -hmm. um, that a lot of people are sending in. Why, I, you, you've spoken about how you're dealing with Galamsey and so on, but why has the government not spoken about this particular issue 
of the protest and the detained protesters beyond the acts of lawlessness which has been stated by the police the human rights infringements which have also been stated by the police uh, by the protesters and their lawyers we've not heard anything at all there's been absolute silence from all your communicators i, I don't Why? really agree with that yesterday we've all just um, we were all privy to what the attorney general said Godfrey Dame, and how he he's going to prescribe that the protesters be given bail yes the how, minister, how many, he, yes. he, he, he didn't say they say should be given no, bail no, he said they should the expedited expedite yes, process and have favorable bail conditions that's that's what he said so many other people so i, I what what's the question is they have there's, there's an expectation mm -hmm. that when wrong is done it's be condemned okay. so the infringements okay so i saw the report by the police where they addressed and mm -hmm. said that the um, the issue of the two protesters who were not given right to counsel within uh, were not brought to court in 48 hours has been forwarded to their professional um, basically the body in the police that oversees their, their professional ethics PIP if I'm not wrong yeah. Pips. yes Pips. so that's that has been done let's allow no, the, the question is why there. aren't you condemning the wrong things that have been done the that's, that's so the, the wrong things being done we've come out to condemn what the protesters did no on the protesters' side, you have condemned it so many times. Yes. On the side of law enforcement, why have you not come out to condemn the wrong things that have been done? Where the wrong things is that the protesters were not, um, two of the protesters were not give, um, give sent to um, court in 48 hours. Is that, is that, That's one of them. Been, they have been the moved without ones? their lawyers, um, knowing where they are, when they were first um, detained, they were not given access These to their counsel. They were not given... High -handedness. It, it, I, every see, matter is before court, listen, but you have condemned you, the thing that the you, protesters did. When you did. talk about high-handedness, we were all here during the Let My Vote count, and we saw what the police did to the members of the No, 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 so allow me to finish. No, no, allow me to finish. When everybody's Let's talking, speak. I am very quiet Let's and I speak. listen. So please, allow yeah. me to finish. That time we saw proper heavy-handedness. People were whipped with, with horse whips. People were beaten with batons. Somebody lost an eye, and I think he died yes. um, after that. And, and, and so we've seen the progress and, that the police has made that And far. the MPP was out saying it was wrong. It yes. was condemned by and civil it, society. It was condemned it by the media. Wrong. So and in right the same now, vein, it's are, being condemned. And the, 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 the truth MPP is, we, that condemned these protests it then, that we are dealing with, we have to actually wait now. and see what's going on. They said somebody was we pregnant. Wait. No, let me land. They said someone was pregnant. It turns out the person isn't pregnant. They said um, the, a young girl was arrested. It turns out she was only sent to the police station and sent home. So yes, maybe we should wait for all the facts to come out before we make a decision. So we have, the so police when, has come out with in the, the same situation that you cited. Pips. Consistently, we had condemn, condemn, no, condemnation. No, are you really comparing media, somebody well, being beaten no. with whips and you are, chains? You are the one who brought the comparison up. And, and so the statements. question is, is this a question of equalization? No, it's not a question of equalization. So, so what, so, what and is it? I, I honestly don't understand what, what, what you mean. People, relevant authorities on this issue have come out to say they are peace. And they are not... Re relevant authorities. Which the Attorney General authorities? has spoken. I, I saw... Um, Yesterday uh, he said yes, that... The, I saw a release by the Minister of Information as well. Yes. So, but but you, you have, the question I'm asking you is that your communicators have constantly condemned what the protesters did, mm -hmm. which are said to be unlawful. Mm -hmm. Why are you not condemning the acts of the police? I have seen so which many people who have on said human that rights. if the police did anything wrong, they should also be held accountable. See, we're in a country if, where who, we want... Who, who, said, who said that? Oh, I, I, I will check on it. I've seen some of my colleague communicators say that. I see. Because yes. we... I, I don't know if anyone... And let me say that. Yes, that. I am saying it's here. Because but, I am absolutely but, against police but brutality. You, you, so you if can anything go on, but was done... On this same platform, your colleague that. called the protesters hooligans. Yes, so I mean, when you meet him, you can ask him. I, no, I can't, I mean, I can't you, speak you, for you them. all speak, you all speak yes, for, I, we, for the see, same I organization. I sat here and I, I condemned the, but, but let's go on. the, the let's bad go on. acts of the protesters. And I'm also saying on the same hand, let's if the on. police did anything untoward, they should also be held, held to book. Because right. nobody should be abused in this country by law enforcement. So that is clear. And that's, that's, those rights should never be, be infringed all upon. Right. When um, previous... Um, Submissions were being made. I was so surprised that how the NDC was trying to act brand new in this situation. In my first um, submission, I asked, "What they, this whole thing was dead under you? What did you do?" Not that I'm I'm trying to um, 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 dissuade. Um, 
responsibility and whatnot is that when you make allegations like this you must come with clean hands there are videos and videos and videos of leading members of the ndc going into galamse pits and telling them that oh vote for john mahama and as soon as he comes just come back to your pits and continue i don't know if you've seen that video can we come and condemn that as well uh, there's a video of the, of their running mate standing next to somebody who is known very well in small mining um, circles to be a very to, a, to be very big in those sectors I'm not going to sit here and, and play politics and demonize. I'm pretty sure the scale at which she is, she's probably a small scale miner and not mining in the river bodies. But yes, that is also there. So if you come and say that he said, um, uh, Honorable Matthew Potikubo Kurempe said, we are not going to take away ex excavation. If you have a, you're a licensed small mining company, why should somebody take away now your, ex your, ex no. your, your excavation? Let, let's let her finish. Ask to put the contest. Let, let her finish. Let's finish. Let her finish. Yeah. Let yes, her finish. all of that happened. The, even this report you want to quote, says that it is well known in small scale mining communities that the NDC is so ingrained in, in the process of Galamse. In the Wasa East District, a former NDC deputy minister, who is also an MP for Wasa East constituency, has been actively mining in the Subri forest for years. Are you when going to read the parts about the NPP leaders? Or no, no, no. I'm making my points right. based on what she said, trying to make it seem like. Yes, I, I, make it, I trying have to that too. make it seem like yeah, the yeah. whole issue yes. of Galamse is because of, 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 of MPP people, which to me is trivializing the issue and making it more difficult for us to fight. Because there are about a thousand people involved in small scale mining, both illegal and, and both legal and illegal. To try and make it seem like it's an MPP, are we sitting here and saying that by mistake, if Ghanaians make that mistake and vote out to the MPP after everything we've done, we outperform the NDC in every sector of human life? Life, health, education, and if you give us time, we can sit here and make that comparison and do that debate. It seems like a conversation that people want to run away from because they will fall flat. For you to sit here after everything that has gone on, you won't go and ask Kwekubwahi. You won't ask Tony Obe. I even saw him here. I, I really that day I was waiting and hoping somebody will ask him about that video. No, you didn't see all of that. What did you do under your time? You provided security to some of these small scale miners, miners who are who were mining in the forest. Reserves. That was what happened under John Mahama. And for you to now come and sit here and say it's an MPP problem, it's a flat lie. A we are idea. telling you that we've trained 4,000 miners. These 4,000 miners are there. They went to UMAT, and if they are watching, they and their families know they've been trained. So for you to come and sit here with no evidence and say it's a lie, I cannot understand. But I'm not surprised because all the NDC do is trade in lies and propaganda. You are talking about um, community mining schemes. How do you expect that you go into a community? Say, I'm setting up a community mining scheme for you people. Then you go and bring MPP party up, um, up, um, operatives to come and do that. You don't think these people have mouths and they will keep quiet and they will right. just allow it to go uh, on. These are land, things that um, have happened. Dr. Tony Obing has just joined us on the line. He's been mentioned a few times. He's a former mm -hmm. CEO of the Minerals Commission. He wants to react to some of the things that have been said this morning on the show. Okay. Good morning, Doc. Hello. Hello, good morning. Yes, Dr. Tony Obin, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you said you wanted to respond to some of the things that have been said. Yes. All right. Yes, I, I, I am extremely disappointed with the, who is that lady, uh, Dr. Mwaku or something? Dr. Kua. I am extremely, I'm extremely disappointed because I want to ask her whether you have seen a video that I, Tony Obin, was talking. Have you seen a video? That I was talking. He wasn't talking. But yes, I think you, and then I think you know the end mm -hmm. people have been circulating false videos, one of which I was I hope we not myself after. in the picture. I was not in the picture in one of the one of the uh, what do you call it, the the, the uh, videos. Please, why do you continue with this lie? You don't have to lie to explain Galante issues. You have to speak with facts, you know. And let me tell Dr. Amuako, you, you know, fighting Galante is not a war. You are not going there with bazookas and, 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 and the AK-47. You fight Galante with policies, with sense. I have never, and you should Google to understand my position on small scale mining. Right from 2009, I have been writing on that. I have been proposing solutions. And even if it's got own government, for eight months, I was supporting how to address the challenge of, of, of illegal mining. 
So he should not continue with the path of his people and still lie that I was that was talking to people too. In fact, at the time I went, the picture that you saw, I didn't even go there as an NDP person. I didn't go there as an NDP. I went there as a researcher. I happened to be in that in that situation. However, did he see he and his people? Did, did I mean she and, and, and her people? Did 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 she hear me talk? There was another video. I wasn't even there. And then they kept the head of the Why? Yeah. How powerful am I? If I have made them lose community, am I powerful than the president? Huh? When, when John Mahama at a point told the nurses that they, you would not pay the allowances, you would rather build schools, I mean, more nursing training and more hospitals yes. so that they will finish and, and have work directly. MPP said, no, they will do that. Did Mahama said, I put my position on it. When he lost, did he die? He lost the election because uh, the, the nurses uh, preferred your position. Did he die? They now come back to say, uh, Bahama, we are sorry. Mahama, we are sorry. So please, speak to fact. You are a doctor. You normally would have to talk based on your direct information, based on research. You cannot rely on uh, hearsays and things that are not factual and say you have seen videos. Have seen. How many videos? How many places did I even go? And uh, couldn't I have visited any uh, mining sites for my own work? What is that? MPP should find a better explanation and try and address their government. They are the government of the day. This is the challenge. The president in his oath promised that he was going to protect Ghanaians. Now Ghanaians are complaining about their water. And it's a health issue. It's a security issue. It's an it's, it's, it's economic issue. So please, don't misuse my name. All right. Um, Dr. Tony Aubin is a former CEO of the Minerals Commission, and he called us because he said he needed to clarify some things that have been um, said. Um, can, just a minute. He said videos have been played in which he is in it. So the video that he is in, I don't think he spoke, but he was introduced and addressed. And the second video is there. I've sent both of them to you. We can play it, and then your audience will descend. I All said right. that's... All right. Let, let's, we're going to cross over um, now to my colleague Armstrong, who is at the protest site which is about to begin now just to find out what's happening on the ground now hello i'm strong hello i'm strong hello yes i'm strong you're live on on new day can you hear me hello yes i'm strong can you hear me i'm strong all right um while we try to reconnect i'm strong um on the phone on the phone lines there we're reviewing the video that you just sent and yeah, um we'll see if we can play it so um, producers Shadrach, can you please to... review the videos that i've just so shared with you they're from, from dr Ikua, and let's see if um we can play them he was just standing there on on no on he the show was addressed in one of them all right um, well, so but but you had made your point later. before yeah. um before yeah, so doc yeah. came yeah. in and oh, so I, no i had i landed yeah i think no, you had you, you cut me i did yes okay please land yeah so the whole what i was trying to say is that no we are not shaking responsibility we are not saying to say that this is also the only reason why the fight at, uh, against galamsey is not yielding the results we want would not be fair to the situation it's a situation it's a, an issue that has so many people involved and are motivated for very different reasons so it requires a very comprehensive approach to be able to deal with so to sit here and throw off accusing fingers like the like my colleague in the NDC started with I didn't want to go on that tangent when I came onto the show this morning if you can go through mine what I wanted to for us to come and discuss was solutions so that we can start moving forward on this issue but if you well, come and sit here and say the community mining scheme was given to N MPP people, uh, the 4,000 minus is a lie. This, that, that. Then we have to rebut those claims. It is not true. All right. You also had executive authority when this issue was there. What did you do? All so right. many of the people in your government who were fighting Galamsey at that time, your Minister of Environment, said the approach where you, you can't win the war the way you are. The approach, change the approach. No, you didn't change the approach. And even right now in their 2020 you manifesto, it, yes. you bring same, the same things you did at that time that failed. Some of the things from the MPP manifesto, and that's what you want to repackage. You are attacking community mining schemes. It is in your, your, it is in your manifesto. All right. In 2020, All right, small scale miners gave trucks to John Mahama. <laughs> you were providing security to them. All right. 
Yeah, no unfortunately, unfortunately, our time is up. You are not sure. Our time is up. But let's see if I can talk to Armstrong. We have seen, we have seen, seen videos of military men. Let's see if I can talk to Armstrong. That's how many of us giving tracks to President Obama. We're trying to get extra time. Let's let's to, let's but let's talk to Armstrong now. Hello, Armstrong. Of this situation, you are in government. Yes, Armstrong. Ladies, ladies, let's talk to Armstrong. Military men have been seen. Armstrong, are you on the ground now? Yes, I'm here. All right. What can you report from where you are? What's happening? So currently here at Okonko, where the uh, protesters uh, are gathering and also hitting up as now, you can count at least no less than about 100 of them already gathered here waiting for the others to join them. Initially, they were supposed to have moved at around 7 a.m., but uh, the time has moved to 9 um, to, uh, So far, the one out of three days, uh, the number seems to be encouraging. Um, the only issue the uh, protesters have is the number of police officers that have been deployed uh, here. I spoke to some of the senior police officers earlier, and they explained to me about 500 police officers are going to be deployed to uh, ensure a peaceful demonstration. Currently here, where, as I speak to you, you can see about um, some buses that are gathered here right now. I'm told these buses are full of police officers, about three of these buses are uh, gathered here right now and then in it are some police officers but you can also see uh, the protesters currently uh warming up they are warming up and a few of them i spoke to are coming from um, the university of ghana others are also uh people who are against the arrest of the protesters that have been reminded for some two weeks now but when it goes down that's why you see many of the protesters uh, gathering and then they came in peace according to them. The only problem is the presence of the police. Some of them say they fear and then they, they feel intimidated by the uh, presence of the police. But let me talk to two of them now. And also let me correct, I'm told about 5,000 police officers, not 500 as I said uh, earlier on. Let's talk to a few of these uh, guys now. Guys, hi, how, how are you? So you are ready for the protest? Well, yeah, yeah. So, so wait. So, where? Well, why are you coming from? I don't want to. Okay. That's okay. So, why, why are you joining the protest? I'm joining the protest because we are tired of what it's so sad and heartbreaking. See, children, women drink raw, unsafe, unsafe. Polluted water. We are yeah, almost yeah. again tired of that. We are. No, no. So I, I I'll try to engage uh, many more of them. Also, uh, get to where the police hierarchy. Uh, we'll see if we can get a few of them to give us some detailed explanation as to how the movement is going to be like. What I know now is that they are supposed to move from Opongo here, march through to the uh, National Service Junction, and then they will take. They yeah, are right through the National Service Road, all the way to the Opongolo, uh, sorry, all the way to Kaukudi. They will march down to the Electoral Commission runabout, and right from there, they will head towards the ridge runabout, and then they will convert finally at the Independence Square. And this march is going to be for the next three days. This they one. Uh, assistance now. So these are some of the uh, officers that have been positioned here and um, the protesters are not too happy about their presence because of the numbers, 5,000, not a small number, assistance right now. Currently they outnumber the uh, number of uh, protesters we have here now, but the protesters are hopeful that uh, it's just a matter of time uh, the press will join them. So the police have been lined up right from the Popon Globe uh, heading towards the taxi run that has come with, uh, I think I can see one FU van position here at the uh, taxi rank, and then um, some uh, ambulances as well. Coming from Ridge, another FU van has a position where they will be crossing over to the Independence Square. Why they are protesting as it stands down, they want the release of the uh, Democracy Hub protesters that were picked up uh, about a week ago, and also calling for the government to halt Galamsey because Galamsey. Uh, they say it's polluting our major water bodies across the country.
Oh, All right. Now, I was asking you earlier if the buses we see in the picture there brought protesters. The, the buses you showed us earlier. The buses, as I said earlier, apart with police officers. All right. All right. All right. All right. And the, if you have some time, let me get uh, to where the protesters are gathered now. Uh, quite some few seconds away from where. I'm standing. I was trying to get the police PRO to give us some details uh, as to how they are going to uh, marshal the protesters from this place. And um, it's not readily available now, but let me get close to where the uh, convenience, the leadership of the protests are currently now. Um, let me get there now and then we can get some details uh, from them. But as it comes right now, we can see many of them beginning to warm up to start to the protest. Earlier, some of the leadership I spoke to told me they are going to move by 9 a.m. It's almost 9, and um, we are still waiting for them to move. But a few of them are here now. Let me engage them, if, if they don't mind. Hi, but boss, how's it going? Uh, okay, so it looks like uh, there's some uh, kind of... Uh, yeah, and some of them they will not talk to me now. As it is now, but then, uh, boss, you, you don't like you don't want to talk. But tell me, why are you joining the protest? We have a choice. Yeah, I mean, fight now or you wait till it gets worse. And then, when you actually can't fight, when you don't give you, when they don't allow you to protest, it's, I mean, it's just going to get worse for you. Fight mm. now or the fight fine. So, I've seen one of the companies to yeah. Let, let me talk to him, boss. You are live on TV now. This is TV three. Can we uh, talk, talk to us? Uh, how soon is the protest going to move? Yeah, thank you so much. Very soon. Let's yeah. speak loud. Thank you so much. Very soon, around nine nine thirty. We'll go. Mm. Yeah. So the main mission for this protest, even though we know, take us through. Yeah, it's just two things. We want His Excellency the President to ban illegal mining to ban illegal mining because the youth, our life is not safe. Mm. Look at our uh, water bodies, our forests, our cocoa. Now in Ghana, we have gold, lithium, manganese, bauxite, timber, all the natural resources. But we just take percentage. The only way, the mineral resource that we have is cocoa. Ghana says are destroying our cocoa. Where is the future of this nation? Where is the future? So we are demonstrating today, tomorrow, and Saturday. We know that His Excellency will listen to our plea and that he will ban illegal. What mining. is the second point? And, uh, uh, the second point is our brothers and sisters who demonstrated to, uh, two weeks ago that we, we are, we are pleading to His Excellency the President, the Attorney General, they should release them for us. They are Ghanaian. Although they demonstrate and then some one or two love system inside, they should temper justice with mercy and leave them for us. Yeah, that is what we are pleading. What are some of the groups gathered here? Also, for uh, my group is here, Shoot Revolutionary, Revolutionary Front. We are here. Then, uh, um, Democracy Hub are here. A lot of groups are here. So, I think as we are moving with you guys, you will see all of them. I can also see some uh, young men wearing uh, black uh, t shirts with inscription security. Who are they? Yeah, they are the security for um, Shoot for Revolutionary Front. They are also security guys here. Yeah, they are here to maintain peace and order. Because of what happened last time, we don't want it to happen again. So we have our internal security here to make sure that some, nobody is going to cause any violence or mayhem here. If anyone jokes here, our boys will deal with him. Mm. That is it. Very well. Yes. But we also told that the president of police, according to some of your uh, members, they, they feel intimidated. Have you heard that? No, no, no. Mm. Anyway, your final works as uh, we are uh, prepared to move. Um, we are pleading to Ghanaians that they should support the youth. They should support the youth. What we are doing is not violence. Mm. We want to save our, our river, our water bodies, our natural resources. When tomorrow starts without the youth, where is the future of Ghana? When tomorrow starts without us, where are we going? Mm. So we are pleading that all of you come out. Come out. Come and join this peaceful demonstration. And then the life of ordinary Ghanaians will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What's your name? I'm Edward Adams. Edward Adams. Thank you. So that is Edward Adams, one of the uh, convenience of the protest that is yet to uh, kickstart. Some few minutes from now, we'll be moving, heading towards the Independence Square. And this <laughs> is expected to 
uh, be done for the next three days. All right, Armstrong, thank you so much for bringing us that update. We'll be relying on you for more updates as we go. Um, so keep your eyes locked on TV3, join the midday news and so on. We'll bring you live updates from the protest. But thank you so much, ladies, for coming in today. Nanaya, Dr. Kriya Rodlin and Louisa, it's been great having you. And I, I, I promise my producers and I will look at our time again and we'll extend it when we have four of you on the show because obviously we need more time to be able to properly and fairly uh, speak to, to play it. I, hope I also play had it a rebuttal. And then, I, it will be on my Twitter, so we, all those... What, what's your handle, videos. please? It's my name. You can just check Dr. Kwame right. when you find it. Yeah. All right. So all that right. you can see for yourselves. All right. I, I, I shared with the team. I'm not sure why it was, they, they were not able to play yeah, it, but um, thank you. Hopefully, all right. So, um... Soon we're going to bring you sports and then we'll go for Community Manifesto with Cookie in the Volta region. But step into a world of Dewa 539 for your chance to win big with Dewa Direct and Dewa Chop Money. With Dewa Direct, dial star 446 hash and pick any number between 1 and 39 and win 20 times, 40 times or 400 times your stake. And win cash every evening at 7 p.m. and on Sundays at, at 6 p.m. Early birds love Dewa Chop Money. At 10 a.m., dial star 446 hash. Choose any number between 1 and 39 and win 20 times, 40 times, or 400 times your stake. Play at dewa-nla.com or dial star 446 hash. If you need any help, please call Dewa on 055-6259. Or 053-053-247-8879. Dewa, Afa, thank you. Uh, you're still watching TV3 New Day. We'll be right back.